So if everybody remembers where we last left off, we got the Corvair running. Mm. So that's pretty good. So today we're going to get it stopping. I got to take apart the wheels and uh, you can join me as I rebuild each wheel cylinder because if you can rebuild it, there's no sense in throwing it away. The four R's. Reduce, reuse, rebuild, and you have to recycle. on the Corvair were basically non-existent, so I figured I'd go through the whole system. We ordered new rubber brake hoses, new solid lines, and some rebuild kits for the wheel cylinders, because I was hoping I would be able to take off the wheel cylinders and clean them up and be able to reuse them. There's no sense in throwing anything out or getting anything new if you can rebuild what you got. So Boxer and I got the Corvair up in the air so we could start taking off the wheels and remove the drums and see what kind of shape the brakes were in. I was hoping I wouldn't find any nasty surprises behind the brake drum. I bet that does it. Alright. Despite the brakes looking good initially, things were about to go sour. To get the wheel cylinders out of the back, you've actually got to kind of like move the axle out a little bit. So I had to undo the axle of the transmission and then I had to slide this out to be able to get access behind. There's two little nuts just buried in there. You can't even see them. Well, you can kind of see them enough to know you can't get to them. But the wheel cylinder has also kicked my butt because uh, as you can see, well, I've already broken off one bolt in there, which really was effortless. I didn't even have to grunt when I turned the ratchet to get that off. Uh, same goes for the bleeder. Didn't even grunt. I just put a little light pressure on it and they both just twisted right off. I should have bought new wheel cylinders, but I'm not giving up on these yet. I'm still going to try to rebuild them. Uh, so the day has not gone well. Uh, while taking things apart, the wheel cylinders on this were so rusty, no matter how much penetrating oil I used, not even heat. I could get bleeders out or anything like that. I ended up breaking off the bleeders in three of the four wheel cylinders, uh, which means I've got to get, and I even tried to weld a nut to them and do it that way, but I couldn't get it. The welds kept breaking, so I wasn't working. So it looks like I got to get four new wheel cylinders. So I've got four of them on order with uh, Clark's Corvair parts and uh, should have those in hopefully by Wednesday. And if I get those in, I'll get back on this and things should go in a whole lot faster then they came out. The next day things went from 70 and sunny to 30 and snowy. I thought it was spring. As I was seeking shelter in the house, something else was seeking shelter inside of the Corvair. What is this? What are you guys doing in here? <laughs> All right, everybody out. By Wednesday, I had spring weather, but no wheel cylinders. I took this opportunity to replace the universal joints on the rear axles. So to replace the uh, rear wheel cylinders on the Corvair, to get to the bolts that hold them in on the backing plate, you've got to pull the uh, axles out. So you got to hook it from the transmission and slide them out a little bit, just enough to get to the bolts that are behind the backing plate to pull off the brake cylinder. So being there was a case of one of those while I'm in there. So while I'm in there, the U-joints uh, on the uh, swing axles looked uh, kind of cruddy. I mean, they feel all right, but again, while I'm in there, it's a 58 year old car. I may as well replace the U-joints. So I got uh, two new ones. And the cool thing is these come with grease circs, so I can service them. These are a non-serviceable, you joint and for 10 bucks, I might as well.
The wheel cylinders were delivered by Thursday and I could start reassembling the braking system. It was getting late in the day and the temperature was starting to drop a little bit, so I figured this would be a good stopping point for the day. Tomorrow I could get up bright and early and start adjusting the brakes and getting everything ready so I could bleed the system. For those unfamiliar with an antique drum brake system, you have to manually adjust the brakes every few thousand miles or so. It's always good to adjust the brakes before you bleed them so that way the brake shoes have less distance to travel. All right, I got a lot of things buttoned up. I did a lot of while I was in there stuff, like the U joints, I repacked all the grease and all the wheel bearings. Um, I re-greased all these suspension components. Uh, I even went ahead and I adjusted the valves on the engine. You know, while I'm in there, I may as well. So all that's taken care of, but now I've got a uh, one-man brake bleeder contraption that I've made up. It is an air conditioning vacuum pump a uh, little, uh, little jar down here to catch the brake fluid and all this. Uh, so this is kind of like a professional vacuum pump that you hook up to an air compressor, but I this little guy. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't have high hopes, but we'll see if it's going to work. Power on. Hey, it's working! Keep doing this until we don't see any bubbles. All right, I think the brakes are all bled using my cool little vacuum machine. Uh, I'm going to test the pedal feel now. And that actually feels nice, nice and firm. I don't feel squishy at all. Yeah, there's no fade or nothing. I'm holding on that, so that means I got no leaks in the system. Good stuff. With the braking system sorted, I could reinstall the wheels and get the wagon ready for its first trip on the road in over a decade. To test out the Corvair Lakewood station wagon, my brother brought by our nieces, so we stuffed them and CC in the station wagon for a trip around the block.
of the Corvair. It did really well. The only problem is I think I over adjusted the uh, front tire here. It was locking up a little bit, but nothing I can't handle. So I got it home now and I've got a crack team washing it down. But I'm so glad that we can end it with a wash because this car has been a pain. I mean, the brake, a brake job on a almost 60 year old car went about as well as, uh, as anyone could think it could go. Rusted bolts, broken bolts, bad brake lines, seized wheel cylinders, horrible. I had to wait for parts. What I thought was going to get done in a day ended up taking five days. Most of that just waiting for parts. But now we're going to start doing some tuning on this, make sure we're gonna, it's going to be running reliably. And then this is going to be our classic camp wagon. So we'll be doing some modifications uh, to make this thing ready for camping. So check in for that. As always, stay classy.